Yo, what's good gamers? My name is Dr. Ryan Terrell, Psych Sensei. I'm a clinical esports psychologist. And on Mondays, what I like to do is read articles or read interesting things and take notes, take nuggets, ask questions, have fun with myself for about an hour. Because if you're not having fun, then what's the point? What I like to do is I like to take these concepts that are written in academia. I like to dumb it down for myself and for you. And of course, as always, this is for entertainment purposes only. If you want to find these articles, you are fully able to find them on the Google Scholars. So these are all downloadable PDFs. If you want to get these articles yourself all marked up and stuff, please feel free to follow me on the Twitters or the X at the Psych Sensei or my website, psychsensei.com. And you can join my Discord. And in my Discord under articles, you can find all the resources that I go through all marked up and everything. So you can just enjoy. What can I say? Your sensei loves you. It's actually a book chapter we're doing today. Today's a book chapter. That's right, we're classy. This chapter is on self-confidence and sports performance. And although I think esports and traditional sports are different, it's interesting to read about how to gain confidence because I've been getting a lot of questions about confidence and how to gain confidence, how to be confident, all of it, not just in gaming, but in life. So this is by Deborah Feltz, Michigan State, shout out. A growing body of it suggests that one's perception of ability or self-confidence is the central mediating constructs of those achievement strivings. Perception. I want to highlight that for you. The reason I want to highlight it is because confidence, burnout, these are perceptual things. It's very hard to quantify a feeling like confidence. At the same time, does it really matter? Because what really matters is how confident you feel. That's the main thing. Someone may have no idea what's going on, but then they just like go balls to the walls and whatever they know. And you're like, wow, that guy knows. That guy knows something. It's the same thing because it's a perceptual issue or perceptual challenge. Self-confidence, here is your definition, which is always important when we're talking about these things because we need to find our terms. As a term is used here is the belief that one can successfully execute a specific activity rather than a global trait that accounts for overall performance optimism. The thing that they highlighted here is belief. So we have perception, we have belief as main factors of confidence. And the thing that I think is also really interesting here, it's specific activity rather than a global trait. Just because you're confident in something or some instance doesn't mean that you'll always forever. It's a specific state of being. And the reason I think it's really smart to define confidence also is that it sets the parameters of the mindset. Because I think sometimes people get stuck in the, if I'm not confident in this one area or this one time, that means that I'm just not confident. Where that's the definition of confidence where it's not a state of being, it's just a state of being right now. For example, one might have a higher degree of self-confidence in one's driving ability in golf. Oh my God, I thought they're gonna talk about cars. <laughs> but a low degree of self-confidence in putting, makes sense. So for example, if this was league, you may have high self-confidence in your ability to lane or get CS, but low self-confidence in your ability to team fight or your macro abilities. Again, specific things that you're confident in, versus a global, I'm good at this game. Maybe for Valorant, it's confidence in your ability to click heads. Maybe not so confident in your ability to read the game at a macro level. You can be confident in one thing and then not another. Although self-confidence is thought to affect athletic performance, its relationship with performance has not been clear in much of the sports science research. I mean, how do you quantify something that's not easily quantifiable, like love? or feeling like confidence. You know, it's really hard to quantifiably tell. And no, February and Christmas is not a good time to quantifiably see how much someone loves you. It's not a good time, but you can. It's not suggested. <laughs> I'm thinking about that one scene from The Office. Self-confidence has been shown to be significantly correlated with skillful sport performance, but whether there's a causal relationship and what the direction of that relationship is cannot be determined from the correlation designs of the studies. The CLDR is, confidence has an effect on performance. We can't always just tell why. Make sure right here. Confidence is a factor in performance. Fact. What direction? Dot, dot, dot. Question mark equals fact <laughs> we just don't know but we know it does affect it but we don't know what direction it goes in oh well let's be real we know what direction it goes in 
but the science has not been like, oh, there's a direction, but we know, but we know between you and me. First, definitions of self-confidence and related concepts are given. I love that. I'm not going to lie. Reading definitions really makes me excited. I can't tell you why, but I love it. In addition, as Bandura notes, self-efficacy is not concerned with the skills of an individual has, but with the judgments of what an individual can do with the skills that he or she possesses. I like that. That's powerful. Confidence is not a question of do you have the skills or not, or can you do it? The question of confidence is what can you do with the skills you have? Or what do you perceive you can do with the skills you have? That's all confidence is, which is really interesting when you think of it from that perspective, because how many times have you seen someone who is totally able to do that thing, but does not believe that they can do it that thing in this specific instance, and then they cannot? Versus someone that may not have the skill, but it's like, I'm gonna do it right now. And then they do it. I'm thinking like half court shots too. You know what I mean? Like all these different things where it doesn't matter the skill you have, but can you show that skill in the time that you need to do it? That's true confidence. Perceived competence and perceived ability are terms that have been limited in use to the achievement and mastery motivation literature and indicated the sense of that once has the ability to master a task resulting from cumulative interactions with the environment. Okay. I'm just trying to say attempts. That's all it really means. Like they're saying that like, oh yeah, through cumulative interactions with their environment. Basically, it's you trying again and again and again and figuring out that you can do it. Their example here is that in traditional sports, they call this movement confidence to describe an individual's feeling of adequacy in a movement situation, whereas Valis defines sport confidence as the belief or degree of certainty individuals possess about their ability to be successful in the sport. Sport confidence sounds more like self-confidence, where this is more like the general state of being. So if I was going to make the leap, right, this is how I would say it. Movement confidence is basically your feeling that you can do the moving. This is a TM. This is a psych sensei TM. You ready? That's right. We just made up a term. This is a PS TM. Mechanics confidence. It's the same thing as movement, baby, but it's your ability. Mechanics confidence, your feeling of confidence to perform a specific mechanic. That is a psych sensei TM right there. Now that you know, if I ever say mechanics confidence, you know where that term came from. You witnessed it first. Why I think these terms are really cool and really, really interesting is it, it highlights the importance of confidence being a moment to moment situational thing, not a general state of being. I mean, it can be, but when you're talking about why some things you feel confident in and why some things you don't feel confident in, this is the difference. Yes, it can be global. It can be a state of being. At the same time, confidence can be a very specific thing you feel good about. It's important to not get it twisted. Self-concept, as it sounds, it's the concept that you have of yourself. This is idea of self gained through self-evaluation and social interactions. This is your self-evaluation, your self-concept, which is different than self-esteem. Self-esteem and self-concept can be enhanced with confidence. There are not the same things. There can be different and confidence affects them. For example, the belief that one can run a marathon in less than two hours is an efficiency judgment. The anticipated social recognition, money, and the self-satisfaction created by a such performance are the outcome expectancies. This is the what will happen if I, and then the other one is can I. So that's the difference. The expectation, the outcome expectancy is the what's going to happen when I do it versus can I do it and how sure can I do it I am. Self-efficacy is a major determinant of behavior. However, only when the proper incentives and the necessary skills are present. Yes. Why I'm saying yes to this is that it's important to also acknowledge that there is a Goldilocks zone for behavior change, behavior persistence, all these kinds of things. And what I mean by a Goldilocks zone is there needs to be a certain amount of challenge and ease and seeing a progression and belief that you can do it so you can persist in that behavior if things are too challenging you don't see the point you don't like it or it feels bad when you do it if that feeling is too strong or stronger than the other feelings of enjoyment you can see your progress you have a goal if the other side is too strong than the other side that's helping or that you want to do good 
it's not going to happen because you need to overcome that shittiness first per se before you can kind of persist so that's why i'm saying it's a golden lock zone where it needs to be that perfect zone where you can see the progress so you can keep going versus feeling bad and terrible and stopping what you're doing according to bandura's theory expectations of personal efficacy are derived from four principal sources of information performance accomplishments vicarious experience verbal persuasion and physiological arousal performance accomplishment provides the most dependable source of efficacy information because they are based on a personal mastery experience. Performance accomplishments. I'm guessing that's like, I can do it. I've done it before. This is my TLDR. If success, more confidence. If fail, equal less confidence. Simple, because depending on what experience you have, you feel more confident that you can do it if you succeed at it. But at the same time, if you continue to fail at it, you're probably going to feel less confident in that thing. Even if people are like, oh, you got it, you got it. You're like, bro, trust me. I played like 20 games. I can tell you for sure. I don't got it. <laughs> the influence that performance experiences have on perceived efficacy also depend on the perceived difficulty of the task, effort expanded, and the amount of physical guidance received, and the temporal patterns of success or failure. Oh, interesting. I like this. Why I like this is because like if I, I did the performance and I did well, but it was so easy that we're just rolling them. If it's so easy and you're just crushing, then even if you're doing really, really well, your confidence still could be really low. Or you didn't try that hard and you still rolled them. You're like, was that, that was even like a test of my abilities. Your perception of confidence. What we've already established is that confidence is not a thing. It's a perception. It's a perceptual thing. All these different aspects here affect that perception of was I able to do it or not. If things are difficult, but not too difficult, if you have success doing it by yourself or not that many failures when you first start, that's a good recipe for you to continue doing it. Like, oh, I'm good at this thing. Oh, I like this thing. And you persist versus like, oh, the only reason I achieved it was because it was easy. I received a lot of help. The less experience one has with a task or situation, the more one will rely on others to judge one's own capabilities. I'm thinking about ego development. If you have no experience about something, then you're more likely to rely on the experience of others to tell you if that's good or bad or not. But as soon as you start understanding the game a little bit more, once you have more experiences or pieces of knowledge, now you can sit down on your own and say like, I think this is good. I think this is bad. It makes sense if you don't understand or know what's going on and you're trying to learn through vicarious experiences why it happens when you have none. And we're talking about verbal persuasion, believing somebody and what they're telling you. When I think about this, the question that comes to my mind is, what do you need to hear, see, think about something, yourself, a situation differently? Like, what is going to change your perception? What is going to change your beliefs? What is that to give you more confidence? Is it going to be someone telling you? And if so, how do you deem them believable so you can understand and truly hear and see what that other person is saying. Because if someone is telling you something, the thing that they said, it has to be realistic, has to be real, has to be based on something. But if real is also a perception, how do you begin to believe that what they're telling you or what they're showing you is real? if you don't believe it. So the question becomes, what do you need to hear, see, or think so you can change your beliefs and perceptions about yourself, about the game, about a situation? Because confidence is a perceptual issue, what do you need to change your perception to be more confident? Bandura states that arousal affects behavior through the cognitive appraisal of the information conveyed by the arousal. So basically, does the arousal change our behavior or does how we think about the arousal change our behavior? And me personally, I'm a Bandura boy. I'm more of the how we think and interpret the situation affects our behavior, not just like, ooh, or feels do that. For example, some individuals may interpret increases in their physiological arousal as fear as they cannot perform the skill successfully, whereas others may interpret the state as being psyched up and ready for performance. Low key, it's all in your head. It's always in your head. It's literally however you perceive it is, it is. That's just because you make up your own delusion. It's your own beliefs and perceptions that affect our world.
and what's around it. People who overweigh their failures will have lower levels of self-efficacy than those with the same performance levels who do not. If we focus and center on the failures and all we take away from the experience is a failure or a bad experience or something that we didn't like, how it ended was how it was. However, if we take the failure in stride and actually learn from it or focus on the lesson there or what we want to change or what we want to do differently or how we're going to progress into the future after making this mistake and moving past that failure, we're more kind, we're more graceful, and we can actually progress and grow into the future versus only focusing on how terrible and bad or embarrassing that thing was. From those four things, what I'm already thinking about, the first thing off the bat, what needs to be said is confidence is not a global state of being. It can be. Confidence is about specific things at specific times. It's more of a skill that you have. And the reason I'm saying it's a skill is because of this. When you talk about confidence, it's this. It's a belief. It's a perception. It's time limited. It's not a question of skills. It's an individual judgment of what they can do with the skills they possess. So again, it's not the, do you have this or do you not? It's what can you do and what can you perform using the skills that you have? Because some people can definitely overperform with the skills they have. Perhaps that is delusional confidence that they can do it with what they got. And at the same time, people with the skills and are capable of doing the things may not be able to perform the skills when they need to. It's not a issue of skill. It's the issue of your perception and belief that you can use this skill in this specific time. That's what confidence is. You can have confidence in different areas. For example, you can have mechanics confidence or mechanical confidence, where you can have confidence in your ability to execute your mechanics in this particular situation in this particular game. But that does not mean that you're confident at the game. You may be confident in laning phase, but you may not be confident in team fighting. What do you need to see? What do you need to hear? What do you need to think so you can change your beliefs and your perceptions and increase your confidence? That's it. Self-efficacy can be broken down into four sources of information and performance accomplishment. Basically, have you done this task before and have you experienced yourself succeeding or failing in it more often than not? Number two, vicarious experience. This is you with no experience of yourself watching somebody and then believing that you can do the thing that they're doing too. We got verbal persuasion or that's somebody that you trust telling you that you can do it and you believing them when they say it. And last thing, we got physiological arousal. That's your interpretation of what's happening in your body when you're doing the task. And are you interpreting that thing as, yeah, when I feel shaky, when all these thoughts race or whatever, that's me getting ready to rise to the challenge for me to crush it. Or are you thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna die. Thank you for coming to my stream, but I'll be back every Monday around 1 or 1.30 p.m. PST to do some more reading with Ryan. Yeah, happy Monday. Hope you have a good one. My right, friends, take it easy. Love you. See you in a little bit.